Hi, I'm Mike Glenn, and I'm the senior pastor of Brentwood Baptist Church. Thank you for coming by our YouTube channel. I'd love for you to hit subscribe. I'd love for you to hit like. That way it kind of tells us that we're kind of hitting the mark that uh, we're aiming at. Um, I'm old enough to remember what the future was supposed to be. You see, when I was uh, a little boy in the 60s, uh, okay, no smart other comments. I know, I know how old I am. Uh, we, had a tel we had a cartoon show called The Jetsons. And the Jetsons were this family in the future who had uh, rocket cars and uh, 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 ultra modern everything. So, you know, so when you went to cook, you just kind of press some buttons and your food would drop out. Uh, everything was about the future and the Jetsons had it all. And we were all thinking that we would live like the Jetsons. We would have rocket cars and um, our, our food would be delivered by some kind of robot and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and wow, we missed that future altogether. And I know we got robots and, and, and that kind of stuff, but we thought life would be better, didn't we? One of the interesting things that has happened uh, with the uh, rise of, of digital world and social media and all of that has been uh, an increase in depression and an increase in anxiety. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this. Uh, and people who study, who stay up late at night and study these things have written a lot of books on it. But, but, but for a lot of us, we're just not as happy as, as we thought we would be or thought we should be or think we should be, and, and we don't know why. Now, first, let me stop here with, with a big red flag. Uh, there is a difference between anxiety and an anxiety disorder. Okay, there is a qualitative difference. And one of the things that we have noticed and discovered about depression and, and uh, anxiety disorder and other things like this is they have a brain chemistry component. And if you have a brain chemistry component, then the willpower, prayer, all that is not going to help the brain chemistry issue. You're going to have to treat, uh, be treated with medicine. And so that means going to a doctor, getting the proper diagnosis, and trying the medicines until you find the one that, fit, uh, that, that works for your situation. If you've been diagnosed with one of these issues, and if you've been prescribed medicine, take your medicine, okay? It doesn't mean you have less faith. It doesn't mean Jesus loves you less. It just means this is your, your thing to deal with. Now, if you had diabetes, you would take insulin, okay? Same thing. If this is what you're dealing with, then take your medicine and do not worry about it or be guilty about it one, one little bit. It is a brain chemistry issue and it is totally out of your control. But what most of us deal with are situational depression. Uh, that is something happens in life and we feel blue about it or we can't quite get to where we want to be and we keep trying and we end up with this constant churning uh, in, in, in our inner life, and we can't rest, which leads to his own problems. We can't eat, which leads to his own problems, all because we are not at peace with ourselves. Now, over and over again, the antidote for anxiety is prayer. Now, you're going, oh, great. Uh, I'm supposed to say, now I lay me down to sleep, and, and that makes me less anxious. No, you're missing the thing of prayer. Prayer isn't about what you say. It's about who you're with. Now, you have people in your life, I have people in my life. When they walk in the room, you feel better. When they walk in the room, you're more confident. When they walk into the room, you figure, okay, we're gonna be okay. Do you know I always knew my father's footsteps? Did you know that, that if, if 100 guys walk down the hall, I could, I could hear my dad's footsteps, I could pick him out, I could tell you if it was him or not. You know where that came from? Most of my life, my dad worked two jobs, if not three. Most of the time, my dad came home after I was already in bed, but I was a sneaky little dude. My mom would make me go to bed, but she couldn't make me go to sleep. So I would lay awake in my bed until my dad came home, and I would recognize his steps in the hallway. When he got home, I would go to sleep. Dad's home, we're gonna be okay. That's the prayer I'm talking about. I'm talking about time in your life where you sit down, you get a quiet place, and you sit with Jesus long enough to remember, one, he knows who you are. 
He knows what you're going through even when you don't say anything. He knows what you need to get through it and he knows how to get you through it because he loves you more than you can ever say. When you sit down long enough to know, okay, whatever I'm dealing with is something, one, that everybody else is dealing with, but it's just part of life. But I'm doing it in the presence of Jesus. So I know, yeah, there's a lot of things in life bigger than me, but there's nothing bigger than Jesus. When I was little, I was always frustrated because I was the big brother. I didn't have a big brother to go get. And so when we would start pushing and goofing around in the playground, somebody would jump up and say, I'm going to go get my brother. And that means they were going to go get a big honker enforcer, and he would come and whip all those little kids uh, because he was the big guy, the big brother. The Bible tells us that Jesus is your big brother. So in those moments when life keeps turning in your head and you can't let it go, then go find your big brother. Sit down, talk to him about what's going on. And stay there long enough till you know how much he loves you. The cure is prayer. Not what you say, but who you with. I'm Mike Glenn, and I'm glad you dropped by. We'll see you next time.